PVCs and fish hydrolysates that go through your, your uh, drip line uh, fertigation. And then we're real big on foliars too, because you know foliars are really the way that you can kind of turn the ship a lot quicker and um, you know get results and you know get out of bad situations. And um, so our foliars are very broad in their structure. You know, another thing that we've really learned is that you know, all these micronutrients and trace elements have all these relationships that we didn't really know. Um, and um, when we start incorporating those trace elements in with our foliar sprays, we get much better results. We don't quite know what's reacting to what, but, you know, clearly um, having a broader spectrum uh, uh, um, structured foliar is going to give you, you know, better results and, and be more ubiquitous and the ability to to help, you know, a situation like this and help somebody else that's in a very different situation, which, you know, we're not custom blending products, so we need a product that can be applied, you know, somewhat universally. Um, and I'm, you know, please ask, stop me, and, uh, you know, I'm <coughs> willing to have this in exchange and questions and things like that. Um, this is our, um, our organic herbicide. It's called Weed Slayer. This was sprayed December 19th. 19th. Um, it works a lot like a glyphosate um, or glyphosate, I hear it say, said both ways, uh, like Roundup. Um, it's systemic, it's, its base is, is huge and all, but it comes in two parts, it comes in an A and a B. The A is uh, basically molasses and huge and all. <clears throat> and the B is a bio, uh, biosurfactant, and which drives the, the huge and all into the plant. Eugenol has been used for centuries as an herbicide, but it's just very costly. So if you had a, a concentrated eugenol product, it would just be cost prohibitive. So you mix it with the biological to be able to extend its capability and drive that phenol into the plant, which is really what ends up killing it. And you get more control. I mean, this is, you know, was a great application, but uh, in terms of timing, but it is killing the root ball, unlike a suppress or something like that is just doing a burn down. It's, it's an acid, a, a suppress is an acid, you're basically, it's a soap. You're taking the sheen off the leaf and then you're, you're exposing it to mother nature and it's burning it down. That's why suppress doesn't seem to work. And I'm not against suppress, I'm just saying it, they work very differently. One systemic, one's a burn down. The suppress takes the sheen off the leaf, exposes it to the elements, especially UVA rays, and it burns down. But if you don't have high temperatures, it's not going to work well. Where ours, we've used it, you know, in in uh, you know Washington and Oregon, just around 32, 34 degrees. Again, it, it took a lot longer to work, but it worked. So you know, it's still it's it, it still has the capability of working even in cold temperatures. So that's not a factor. What about rain? You want to have, you know, the, the, the manufacturer says about five hours. I, I'd like to say 10, you know, um, you know, it's just it, the more that it can can have a chance to get into the plant better. So you kind of want to pick your windows. There was a weed expert doing this speech in Sonoma a couple weeks ago. He was saying that weed slayer is not yet registered for grapes or is he misinformed? He's misinformed. It's, 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 it's organic registered, um, WSDA, um, it's FIFRA 25B, if you don't know what that is, that's I meaning it's EPA exempt, it's considered a benign product, and um, so it doesn't need registration, it has no intervals, no limits, there's no EPA control over it. Hmm. Um, and the, you know, the funny thing about California is um, they don't take any money if you're a fit for 25B <coughs> registration, which is kind of ridiculous. You think they take money, and they want. but um, yeah. So there's no if you're a fit for 25B, um, California waves you in unabated. How how often through the season do you have to treat with it? Well, it just depends. It depends on your soils. It depends on your weeds. It depends on how much you've been controlling it over well, compared time. Compared to suppress, well, that's what we use. So this, this right here is a single treatment, and it's at 2.5% concentration instead of the 2%. We go with a richer concentration, and it seems to have a little more bang for your buck. So it's a single pass. Um, for the whole once, season? Once it buds out, once the vines bud out, we don't want to bring, um, bring the weeds <coughs> so later back. So it's a one-shot so I think like you need to do at least five. 
but no, you know, it really depends. But you know, if you get away with you know one shot on it and it gets you through, you, I mean, we have people using it all through the season. We have people using it one or two shots, and that's it. It really How's depends. How's the price compared to suppress? Price. Price. What's the comparison? It's, it's probably almost half the cost. Really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so this was sprayed about six weeks ago and the grass would have been much shorter would it work if it were sprayed now now that the grass is a little higher we've we've sprayed it at you know 12 and 16 inch Bermuda grass and, and I, I can I have pictures of it I can show you that we've, we've killed it so yes it will you just got to get more saturated but yes it'll, it'll kill longer longer weeds but like any herbicide, the shorter, the better, right? You know, it's going to be more effective. So if you can get it on early, you're going to get better results, just shorter. And I even say, if you're longer and you have the ability to mow it and then apply it, that's what you should do as well. Hmm. Was this put on with a backpack? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> but you can run it through your spray rigs. Um, you know, a lot of people do. So if you, if you, you know, if you have the property that allows that. And it's effective on a wide range of cover crop that might be growing in the vineyard, like maybe blackberry vines and things like that? You know, it's an indiscriminate killer, so it's not, you know, it's going to kill whatever. But I've used it on my blackberries on my fence lines, <coughs> and it killed it, you know, very easily. That's interesting. That's a tough one to kill. Yeah. What's the concentration <laughs> of... It's about 2.5%. 2, 2. I mean, it, it, you got, in, in terms of the tank mix, we're doing about, um, it's a part A and a part B, like I said. So you have your molasses and your eugenol with your biosurfactant, which is, so you have an A and a B. We're mixing them to about a quart and a half per 30 gallons. Or I can go the other way. I can go a quart of each per 20 gallons. So I'm trying to get that kind of 2.5% concentration level. There's a... Does the molasses give you a problem with this, the spray heads? No, it doesn't. It, it, it cleans doesn't. up? Yeah, it's fine. It's not that concentrated. You're just, that molasses is in there to, to, to feed that biology, get that biology revved up. So that's another, that's a good point in the sense that you want to get it on pretty quickly. It's, it's not that if you don't get it on in five hours, it's going to be not, not going to work. But when you feed that biology, it's going to be at peak. And so every hour after that is going to be less at peak. So just kind of keep it. When I get it ready, get it on. What, what's the living organism? Um, it's a various sure. bacillus that they've figured out. What you know? What product are we talking about? The wreath layer. Oh, yeah. I thought that was eugenol. It is, oh. but it, it, it the biosurfactant is what it goes in at, which is a bacillus combination. Uh, they go. Uh, it's a two part. It's a two part product. So the biosurfactant is the con is the vector for the eugenol to get into the. It, yeah, drive, yeah, exactly. it drives. Yeah, exactly. It drives that into the plant. That's what that's what drives. Otherwise, you, if you didn't have that, you'd have a very a cost prohibitive product if it was used at all concentrated. So that's 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 really where the intellectual property is. Is in the, as I always say, the biosurfactant does the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. What kind of bacillus? It's on the label. <laughs> How's that with the wine? <laughs> you know, here's a good thing about here's a here's a really good thing about this product, and and a, you know, it, it sounds odd, but it's gone after it's applied because it gets it gets actually consumed by the bacillus, all the eugenol. So there's nothing there, and it actually improves soil health as in the process, long-term soil health, because you have this biology that you're introducing. So rather than a soap, is that how you would describe the a soap? The typical the, well, it, 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 the soap is 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 going as a is going a different pathway. It's going as a burn down. The soap is the soap is basically um, you know they said taking the, the sheen off the leaf and exposing it to UV But we're not. We're we're systemic. And so we're we're, we're actually driven in. That's how we get control like this because we killed the root ball. If we just killed the top part, we'd already be seeing growth going a lot yeah, more growth. <coughs>